robots ready. Start your motor! Let's robotic out! the ultimate robot challenge. To go all the way, our builders and their bots will have to tame the gauntlet, vanquish the labyrinth, and survive the fight to the finish. I'm your host, Ahmed Zappa, and this here, this, this is Tanya Mimi. That's right, and have we got a show for you. Let's meet our first set of competitors. Now, nah. entering the arena, you may recognize the name, but this bad bot is back with a brand new face and an even bigger bite. It's Jawbreakers of the Dead. Descended from a former Robotica finalist, this two-wheeled bot has all new chops. Built in a scissor configuration, these teeth chomp with 3,000 pounds of force, and with an invertible design, Jawbreakers Revenge can eat while standing on his head. And Jawbreakers Revenge was designed by Tim Berghoffer. Tim was a contestant on the first season of Robotica. And after his defeat in the finals, Tim started plotting Jawbreaker's revenge. And tonight, he hopes to take that revenge and Robotica gold. We're back with a new and improved robot, Jawbreaker's Revenge. It's got three times the crushing force of the other one, and we're hoping to get somebody in those jaws. And his opponent, he's an explosive little guy with a knack for sticking his bus on nose in all the wrong places. It's Buzz Bomb. At a sparse 90 pounds, Buzz Bomb may not tip the bathroom scale, but he'll definitely register on the Richter. Two horsepower churn his four pneumatic wheels, and his seven inch buzzsaw spins at a robotically lethal 4,800 RPM. And Buzz Bomb's builder is John Hoffman. John is a family man first, and a robot builder second. So when this medical equipment engineer designed Buzz Bomb, he turned to his family to help test it. Needless to say, it passed with flying colors. Now John's about to put Buzz Bomb to the ultimate test. Buzz Bomb may be small, but he's fast and powerful, and he's going to show these big bots a thing or two. Two robots with everything to lose, and they're about to put it all on the line in the gauntlet. And it goes a little something like this. Bust through the wood, pummel the cans, beat the bricks, and waste the blocks through the rubble. Then it's up the ramp and through the glass, and the gauntlet's yours. On that note, let's go down to our very own robot expert, Dan Dignick. Thanks, Tanya. Jawbreaker's Revenge is a popular and well-designed robot. Look for driver Tim Berghofer to literally bounce his way over the debris field while racing around this track. But guess what? Newcomer Buzz Bomb is going to do the same thing because he's also light, fast, and has ample ground clearance. Plus, at 90 pounds, Buzz Bomb's four-wheel design will be a lot easier to drive than Jawbreaker's two-wheel configuration. Look for both of these bots to tear through this event, meet at the ramp, where they'll have to duke it out to see who makes it to the center arena first. Thanks, Dan. It's workout time. Keep up if you can. Robotic. Robots ready. We're on the way. Here goes the Jawbreaker's revenge cam. Oh, it goes crazy as he takes out the cans. He's fighting through debris at turn one. Buzz Bomb gets through the cans. He's into the far rail. He turns now around turn one and straight through the bricks into the blocks, but now he's high centered. Amit, that front bumper has a downward angle to it. John Hoffman's robot actually forces debris to go underneath it, and that's what has him stuck. He's spinning those tires. Jawbreaker's revenge pushes through the bricks. Nicely done. Oh, but he doesn't wheel. He turns over. Ahmed, I mean, he doesn't have a guide wheel on the top of that job, but he can still run this way. Oh, he's not going to try it, Dan. He flips back over as he takes out the blocks. Buzz Bomb's still sitting there. And here comes Jawbreaker's revenge, pushing debris as he rounds the halfway point. Buzz Bomb's blocking him, Ahmed. He may not have any choice but to bump him free here. And you called it, Dan. Buzz Bomb is loose. Jawbreaker's revenge into the block. And now he's going to push Buzz Bomb backwards. Got a little jam up on the brakes here. Jawbreaker not allowed to use that jaw in this event. And it looks like we're at an impasse. Buzz Bomb's still spinning those tires, Ahmed, but he's outweighed by a good 115 pounds here. Now Jawbreaker's revenge slips past. He's around the third turn and right into the cans. He had some trouble with these earlier. And 
with another wheelie. Look at him go. Sweet. And now as John goes right to the rail, he may be stuck. No, I agree. Buzz Bomb is fighting to get to the halfway point. John Hoffman is having a lot of trouble with the debris. Up the wall there, Ahmed. This is panic driving. He can see Jawbreaker's Revenge at the opposite corner, about to ascend the ramp. He's trying to play catch up. Jawbreaker's Revenge is up the ramp. Then goes the board to glass. Jawbreaker staying very controlled here. Well, because of that leading jaw, he's got a very narrow profile for breaking glass. Tim might be better off driving backwards up there. You can see that concentration. And Buzz Bomb is stuck again, this time on the bricks. John is very discouraged. His robot is so evenly balanced, shifting its weight once it's high centered is virtually impossible. John Breaker's Revenge is clearing the platform with precision. Four pains left. He's continuing to use that jaw end, but with his opponent stuck, he's got time for the slow approach. One final pain, and there it is. Here comes the bonus pain. John Breaker's Revenge lining up for the final shot. Getting a running start, and yes! Another wheelie with a spin move. Stylish finish for Jawbreaker's Revenge. Tim Burkhopper won a great show, having fun. He's also won the gauntlet. Ahmed Buzzbomb came out with a lot of speed, but speed is what gets you high centered. Jawbreaker's Revenge showed steadiness as well as flash, and that's what won him this competition. All right, Jawbreaker's Revenge shows the gauntlet. Who's boss? And here are the scores. Jawbreaker's Revenge with 85 points, beating Buzz Bomb, who's got 40. Let's go down to Tanya on the floor. All right, here we have Tim Burgoffer, and Jawbreaker is back for revenge. Great round of competition. Thank you. Now, you guys, you started off really strong. Both bots started off strong. And here you are, you're going around the corners, and you had your, your, the jaw open. Mm -hmm. Was that choice? Well, we figured he was about, we couldn't use the jaw, but we figured if he accidentally got in there, at least maybe we could use it to push him around a little bit. Okay. So we kind of strategically opened it to a certain position. So that was a part of your strategy? Yeah, a little bit. You know, we figured he's a lot lighter than us, so if he did end up in our jaw, we'd have no problem uh, dancing around with him for a while. And Jawbreaker is a, is a very well-built machine. I mean, it's bimodal. Here you are, flipping up and down. Is that something that you just have to speed up and he flips over? Or? Yeah, it actually, uh, a lot of times, it's, it's unintentional. You know, we're trying to accelerate over an obstacle and just by chance we flip upside down. But <laughs> this year I've got my controller rigged up where if I do flip upside down, I can easily hit a switch and reverse all my controls. All right, let's talk about this spectacular finish, how you popped a wheelie. <laughs> Well, I saw that uh, I saw Buzz Bomb was was not anywhere near us, so we could uh, do a little showmanship. So I knocked up the full power on my controller and thought I'll try and put on a little show at the end. Yeah, got to do a little showing off. All right, Jawbreakers Revenge! Congratulations! Thank you. And we are going to the Lambreth next. Thank you, Tanya. I'm tired of these two. Bring me new robots. Now, entering the arena, this robot feeds on steel, aluminum, and the dreams of its competitors. It's Pangolin. Weighing 206 pounds, Pangolin rides on six industrial cart wheels and features a unibody welded aluminum frame. And the nose isn't just a wedge. Oh, no, it's a flipping device that will toss its opponents like insects. And Pangolin's owner is Mike Atkins. Mike saw Robotica as a great way to bond with his son, Brett. Together, they built Pangolin. And win or lose, Mike knows he and Brett will have learned something about sportsmanship. Together. We're Team Pangolin, Robot Pangolin, with the newcomers on the block. We're here to make a name for ourselves. And his opponent, rising up from the depths of the abyss, this monster-sized robot is in 20,000 leagues of its own. It's Nemo's Nemesis. This pyramid-shaped robot reaches the max dimensions allowable, 209 pounds heavy and four feet in each direction. Two drive wheels get their juice from 24-volt motors with a third wheel on a swivel caster. And this bot can really make you flip for it, with not one but two pneumatic scoops aimed in different directions to fend off any angle of attack. And the captain of this ship is Andy Chen. Andy is the ultimate tinkerer. From the family sedan to an old radio he picked up at a garage sale, Andy can't leave well enough alone. He got the inspiration for Nemo's nemesis from Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And tonight, he's going to see if he can take his tinkered creation to the finals. It's been said it takes three people to make an idiot. Well, we've got four people on our team, so Nemo's nemesis has got a great chance. Ah, yes, once again, it's time for the gun. 
Robots ready. Here we go. Penguins up first. Here's the penguin cam through the cans. He's into the first turn. Nemo's nemesis motors into his wall of cans, too. He's having trouble pushing it aside with that wide body design on it. Penguin wasting no time. Heads into the bricks. Gonna get another run at the debris here. Nemo pushes those cans in the corner, and now Penguin hits the blocks. Oh, he's got a lot of debris in front of him now. Mike is trying to fight through it there. Nemo's nemesis around the first turn, having steering trouble at the bricks. I meant the combination of having two wheel steering in that wide frame makes it very difficult to negotiate this track. The slightest miscalculation puts you right into the wall. Nemo's nemesis is trying to straighten out. Pushing a ton of debris there. Penguin is still struggling through the blocks. Here's the Penguin cam. Gets a brick off his head, but that's it. Ahmed Penguin has an ineffective wedge design. It doesn't keep debris from getting under his tires, nor does it push it to the side. Nemo's nemesis, another unusual wedge design. Andy's robot is carrying every last brick into that wall of blocks. And Penguin is finally at the halfway point, and it looks like Mike is aiming for the back ramp. He just wants out of the way, Ahmed. Nemo's about to come through there, and there's not enough room for the both of them. And Penguin backs into Nemo's nemesis, tries to force him out of the way. Nemo bumps back. Another hit from Penguin. Now it looks like they got past each other. And here goes Penguin. He's got a clear path on it. Nemo's nemesis pushed every obstacle out of the way with that wide front. Penguin is already back to the starting point. And he is up the ramp, and here goes the glass. Penguin now has a huge lead thanks to that monster plow of Nemo's nemesis. And you can see Nemo still struggling in the background there. Penguin takes on another pain. Nice. Nemo's nemesis still not driving straight. Kicks a block aside, but can he catch up? Penguin's got half the platform cleared. Ahmed, even if Nemo's nemesis can get around the track, I don't see how he's going to get up that ramp. I'm not sure if Andy's robot will fit. Penguin takes out two more pains. He's got three to go. Nemo's nemesis desperate to score some points here. He's through some rubble, and at the third turn, Penguin takes out two more pains. One to go. And he's got it! Here comes the bonus pain. Mike Atkins lines up the shot. And there he goes! Penguin takes the gauntlet! It was close for a while, but Mike and his son took advantage of their opportunity. There's a hot five for the victors. Ahmet Nemo's nemesis was so wide, not even a paint can could slip past him. But Penguin anticipated the problem and skirted his opponent in the only place he could. From there, the gauntlet was his for the taking. And Pangolin makes the gauntlet look easy. The scores are Pangolin with 60 over Nemo's nemesis with 50. Tanya's down right now with the winner. Mike and Brett Atkins representing Team Pangolin. Great job. Great round of competition. Now, usually slow and steady wins the race, but not in this round. Nerves. Nerves. Is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> you just started well, driving that machine and went right going. for it. Yeah. For the well, labyrinth or anything else, I'm going to have to get my pace down a little bit. I like the design of your bot. Who came up with Thank that? You. Well, I did, but not intentionally. It's, not intentionally? No, it wasn't shaped different than that until I went way overweight. It was on a diet. Okay, now tell me how your wedge works. You didn't really raise it until the very end. It's pneumatics fired, mm -hmm. and I have to raise it because it's so low that it will actually high center myself. So I'll raise it to get up over the ramps and stuff right. to get over debris. I liked it at the very end how you kind of said, wah, and then you went through the, the last yeah. pane of glass. But why did you wait so long to use it? trying to save air supply. Okay, and what do you think that, that the secret to your success is over the other robot? I think I got a little bit more pushing power than he has. You did, he did a great job. Now, any changes for the labyrinth? Uh, just the one for breaking the glass for the point systems. We'll add that, All we'll right. add that to it. And Brett, you proud of your dad here? Yeah. All right, we're going on to the labyrinth. Great job. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> With everyone through the gauntlet, the scores look like this. Jawbreaker's Revenge leads Buzz Bomb 85 to 40, while Pangolin leads Nemo's Nemesis 60 to 50. I hope these guys aren't too tuckered to take on the Labyrinth, because it's coming up next, and it is hard. It is so hard. And of course, we can't forget the fight to the finish. Robotica, the Iditarod of competitive robotics. <laughs> Welcome back to Robotica. We just saw Buzz Bomb get stranded on a loose brick, leaving Jawbreaker's Revenge to eat up the final pain. And Penguin had to find a detour around the super wide Nemo's nemesis, but he fit through the last doorway easily. So after one event, the scores look like this. Jawbreaker's Revenge is in the lead over Buzz Bomb 85 to 40. 
while Pangolin is beating Nemo's nemesis 60 to 50. The bots took quite a beating in the gauntlet. Dan Danknick is standing by in the robot ER. Thanks, guys. Now I want to show you a beautiful robot. Look at this, Jawbreaker's Revenge, just the jaws. Aluminum core, titanium on the outside, hardened tool steel insert. Any robot gets in there, it's going to be past tense. If you look inside the robot, dual linear actuators, perfectly packaged, shock mounted radio receiver. It's really solid work, but I have to ask you, Tim, what's its weak spot? Well, I'd have to say right now its weak spot is its controllability. We decided uh, that we learned from the last jawbreaker that that's definitely something that you have a problem with when you got two big wheels mounted this far apart. But we decided that the advantages outweighed the disadvantages. We can flip over as you saw in the gauntlet and keep on going and it gives us some real quick maneuverability. We can spin very fast but I'd say ultimately the weak point is just the design of the two tires mounted on the outside. Okay well we'll be looking for your performance in the labyrinth. Okay we look forward to it. Let's go see what Buzz Bomb is buzzing around with. Yeah. Hi, John. I got to tell you, I predicted you're going to be able to bounce over those bricks, and you know. I was hoping to bounce over them, but uh, I bounced one too many times and landed high and dry on a set of bricks. We well, have a simple design, skillfully executed. H how do you feel? You spent all this time getting to this point. Well, it's a little disappointing to get stuck, but I, I knew that was a, uh, a concern, a possible uh, weak point for the for the gauntlet. I'm, uh, I'm hoping that I can exploit the fact that I can small and maneuverable and quick and I can uh, try and zip through the maze. And, uh, you know, Jawbreaker's a tough one to get paired up against, but uh, I'm hoping that I can uh, make up some points in the maze. Okay, well, that's always the key. Earn as many points as you can in the events at Robotica. That's the story in the pits. Back to you guys. Duck a shame, Dan. Now let's learn a little more about the robot, Buzz Bomb. John Hoffman's creation, Buzz Bomb, is a 90-pound, two-horsepower hummingbird of a robot. Buzz Bomb's small profile and impressive power-to-weight ratio is John's formula for success. In Robotica, there are the big walls of bricks to punch through. Rather than knock the whole wall down, I can try to squeeze through a little hole. But Buzz Bomb's secret weapon is its frame. Made of 60-63 grade structural aluminum extrusion, this frame allows John lots of flexibility to customize the bot for any task. And it doesn't require any welding. It's kind of fun to work with. It makes it really easy to just dream up a robot and build it. The question now is, is Buzz Bomb built for a comeback? Buzz Bomb got hung up on some bricks, so he's got some work to do if he's going to move on. He's also got to beat the formidable Jawbreaker's Revenge. For Jawbreaker's Revenge, Tim Berghoffer streamlined the original Jawbreaker design and put more emphasis on the weapon. And what a weapon it is! A set of titanium jaws with 3,000 pounds of crushing power. With this kind of bite, Tim intends to have his opponents for lunch. We plan on driving around with them wide open and hoping to uh, kind of scoop somebody in there and uh, once they're in there we're going to start clamping and they better hope they can get out because if they don't we're into them. This should give them the edge in terms of quickness. It's a little bit harder to control a two-wheel drive robot. It's harder to keep a straight course with it. But then again in the fighting part of things you're really maneuverable. You can flip upside down. You don't have to worry. Will Jawbreaker truly get his revenge the second time around? We're about to find out. Keep in mind that a design that worked in the gauntlet won't necessarily work in the labyrinth. What's that? You don't know what the labyrinth is? Well, allow me to show you. Six challenges guard six glass panes. The tougher the challenge, the more points the pane of glass is worth. Smash through the mall and get past the gates to the final pane, and the bonus points are yours. Now watch out for the Robotica rats, because they're coming for you, baby. Let's check in with Dan Danknick, who is standing by. Thanks, Tanya. At first glance, it might look like Jawbreaker's Revenge has the edge here, but look a little closer. Jawbreaker's Revenge has two wheels, and Buzz Bomb has four. That makes the bomb more controllable, and perhaps even more agile in the tight corners of the labyrinth. The only trouble he'll get into is if he gets anywhere near those powerful jaws. One quick bite, and there will be two buzz bombs on this course. Back to you. Thanks, Dan. There's John Hoffman's buzz bomb rolling in on the left, and Tim Berghoffer's Jawbreaker's Revenge on the right. Both have added those vertical glass breakers special for this event. The labyrinth is hungry. Robots ready? They better be. 
Robots ready. The Labyrinth is on. There goes Jawbreaker's Revenge right after Buzz Bomb. Oh, yeah, you see those jaws closing through Jawbreaker's cam? Nice. And Buzz Bomb is in the grasp. Oh, he may be helpless here as Jawbreaker's Revenge carries Buzz Bomb out of the turntable, Dan. Amit, this is a worst case scenario for Buzz Bomb. His ground clearance was just high enough for that jaw to get underneath him, and just low enough that when Jawbreaker's Revenge clamps shut, it lifted his wheels off the ground. He can't even fight this attack as long as he's in that vice. Jawbreaker's Revenge looks a little unwieldy there trying to carry his opponent, not used to that extra weight up front. Tim Berghopper is trying to straighten his robot out. I assume he'll go for points, but we got ourselves an interesting dilemma here, Dan. If he uses Buzz Bomb to break the glass, who gets the points? Well, the judges are saying they'd be Jawbreaker's points, but poor Buzz Bomb probably feels he's got a case. Jawbreaker's Revenge is heading for the rollers, one of the big point obstacles here in the labyrinth. Looks like he's having some trouble underneath the wrecking balls. Those two wheels are just spinning on the rollers. Buzz Bomb hits the wrecking balls and slows Jawbreaker down just enough to give him trouble. Jawbreaker fights through and 25 points. What a cruel way to get. Jawbreaker's Revenge is having trouble turning in this tight alley of the labyrinth. John can only watch here, but right now I think the only way he'll get free is if Jawbreaker just decides Buzz Bomb is too unwieldy to keep carrying. Dan, it just hurts to see all those points go to Jawbreaker's Revenge. Buzz Bomb should get an assist or something. Bottom five. Um, not that he's trying to, but Buzz Bomb is also helping Jawbreaker's Revenge avoid flipping over in this competition. That extra weight up front counteracts the inertial effect of the jaw rising up when Jawbreaker accelerates. Without Buzz Bomb there, Jawbreaker could flip himself, maybe snap off that glass breaker, and then he'd be in trouble. Jawbreaker's Revenge fights his way over that jump, still holding tight to Buzz Bomb, and he rams him into that box! That's cruel! He's through, and there's 50 more points for Jawbreaker. And come on! Five more points for Buzz Bomb. Somebody work me here. Come on, judges. Jawbreaker's Revenge is back out from the box, heading through the saloon doors, and here come the rats. Maybe they'll prompt Jawbreaker to let go of his opponent. Actually, Ahmed, Jawbreaker will probably use Buzz Bomb to fend off the rats. Let Buzz take the damage and save himself for the next round. He is smashing that rat against the saloon doors with the little guy. Gray rat biding his time. And now he pushes Red Rat right through the doors, almost flips him. Red Rat takes a couple of pokes at Jawbreaker's tires, but nothing doing, baby. Jawbreaker's heading over the ramp. Oh, good timing, Amit. Jawbreaker started over the ramp before it was all the way down. Too many contestants wait until it's flat before going, and it springs up before they can clear it. Here's Jawbreaker Cam as they prepare to come back out. He did get those 20 points. He goes for it and makes it. And now Gray Rat gets in the action. Oh, don't grab the little man. There you go. Head Jawbreaker where it counts. Jawbreaker's Revenge heads into the sand. Sand goes flying. Oh, but little Buzz Bomb is truly the 98-pound weakling getting sand kicked in his face. Jawbreaker spinning those tires quite a bit. Now he's through. 25 more points for Jawbreaker's Revenge. Tim Burgoffer is running an evil but very effective lab. He's got his first real challenge here, though, Amit. Those tire treads are caked with sand. It's just wet enough to fill those cracks, and he's lost all traction here. He may be stuck. So let the little guy go so he can get some points. That's what I do. There's not a lot of time left. Jawbreaker may be content to hold on to his foe, let the clock run out, and walk away with a solid win here. The rats have backed away. You can see those tires spinning, just digging deeper into this pit. There are the contestants. You can see John Hoffman talking to the Jawbreaker guys there, saying, hey, if you let me go, I'll, I'll, I'll help you get out. They don't seem to be going for it, though. The clock is winding down now. And there's the siren. Can Jawbreaker get out of sand and read some bonus pain, Dan? If he can, Buzz Bomb will be what gets the gate down for him. Without him, Jawbreaker would probably just flip over every time he tried to accelerate into the gates. Well, now it looks like Jawbreaker's revenge is moving. He's free from the sand, but he has to hurry. He's still spinning those tires. He's ruined them for this event, Amit. He may be out of the pit, but that sand in his treads is keeping him from getting traction, even on the hard labyrinth floor. He's banging back and forth off the rail, still refusing to let Buzz Bomb go. The poor guy's been beaten up and up this round. There's the buzzer. The bonus pain will go untouched, but there's no doubt who ran away with this event. An impressive display by Tim Berghofer. John Hoffman just has to laugh. Good sport. On it, this match was decided in three seconds with Jawbreaker's crushing grip. Buzz Bomb may have broken the glass, but Jawbreaker's the one who got the point. Despite his hang-up in the sand, Jawbreaker still pitched a shutout. And Jawbreaker's revenge will be moving on to the fight to the finish. He picked up 85 points and did an excellent job of keeping Buzz Bomb from scoring any. Let's go down to Tanya on the floor right now. Hey, here we have Tim Berghofer and Jawbreaker's Revenge. Now, you guys, 
it, you're, you're leaving me speechless here. I'm not quite sure what to say about this round. <laughs> well, we hated to look like bullies with the uh, us grabbing the other robot. We figured the best thing for us to do was to try and take control of him right away. That way he couldn't get around and so score you, points. So you uh, planned it. Well, sure. I mean, we figured he's just the right size for our jaws, and everybody's been waiting to see those jaws all week. So we said, okay, we're going to uh, take him with us, and uh, that's what we did. I know, but you took him with around the whole track. Yeah. Then you get stuck <laughs> in the sand, and you still didn't let him go. Uh, well, it was one of those things then where if we let him go, you know, we never knew what was going to happen. So we figured we'd just keep chomping. But then even though you, your, your wheels were going, you were digging yourself even more and more more into the sand. Yeah, eventually we worked our way out. We were trying to rock out like when you got a car stuck right. in snow, you know, and uh, it took us a while. At the very end, we finally popped out of there, and that's, uh, I wish it would have happened a little sooner, but. Did it ever run, run across your mind to put him on the flip ramp? We, I was kind of wondering if we that's what was going We thought about on. it. We thought about it, but it's hard. He's controlling the jaws, and I'm driving, so we're kind of two independent oh. things going on here. So you are controlling the jaws. Yeah, well, I, I feel bad, and I feel good, mainly because <laughs> we're good friends with the other team. But um, uh, that's the way it goes in battle. You don't but feel guilty at all? Oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do, definitely. But I mean, have, he's a little guy, you know? That's, I that's know. The, that's the name of the game. So. <laughs> all right, well, here we go. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you. On to the fight to the finish. <laughs> With one labyrinth down, the scores look like this. Jawbreaker's Revenge pummeled Buzz Bomb 170 to 40. And with their labyrinth coming up, Pangolin leads Nemo's nemesis 60 to 50. Now Jawbreaker's Revenge is fight to the finish bound, but who will join him? When we come back, Pangolin will tangle with Nemo's nemesis in their labyrinth. If you don't want to miss all the Robotica conversations at the office tomorrow, then you better stick around, because we're going to be right back with Robotica. Revenge sunk his teeth into Buzz Bomb early, and he ignored all etiquette by running the labyrinth with his mouth full. He did learn one lesson, though. Don't play in the sandbox for at least 30 minutes after eating. In addition to this medal, the winner of tonight's competition will move on to our Robotica Finals at the end of the season. But don't get hung up on all that mumbo-jumbo. We've got robots to break. And speaking of broken robots, Dan Danknick is down in the pits right now. Thanks, guys. Let's take a look at Nemo's nemesis. Now, I want you to see something very interesting here. They're using a belt drive to couple their motor to their wheels. One of the few builders that have chosen this direction. Belts are really useful for absorbing a lot of shock without slipping off. Uh, chains tend to walk off the sprockets when they get a lot of shock. Belts can tolerate that. What are you guys working on right now? We're uh, trying. Go ahead. Okay, well, we're, we're changing our nitrogen bottle for the next round. Got it. So you're just refilling? Are you going to make any other changes for the labyrinth? Uh, yeah, we found out that we were a little too wide when the clipper was up, so we're going to cut it back so that we're under the forefoot when we're open. I see. So you're going to shave a little bit off the width? Excellent. Well, that's the neat thing about Robotica is you can change the design of your robot in between rounds, give yourself a bit of an edge in the next one. Now, Mike, uh, did Penguin take any damage in that last round? Yeah, I took a couple good blows on my front wedge. Um, it's got a slope to it now. I'll have to pound that out a little bit. Get out the big hammer and try to stretch it back out. But I'll tell you one thing you're not going to have to pound out are these awesome giant chains that you've engineered on your drive line. Now you said this is number 40 chain. Yes. It seems a little over designed, but the flip side of that is you're not going to have any failures with it, are you? I shouldn't have any failures, and uh, some of the small chains, when they get slack, you know, you'll end up slipping chains. You'll hear them. You know, skip the teeth. Right. Uh, mine's got to get uh, a lot of slack before it starts doing that. And I've tested it. I've actually backed some of these things off, but still went, still drove fine with it. tremendous slack in it. Excellent. So you have a lot of room for things to go wrong. You'll still be Try running strong it. out there. Try to. Great. Very clean robot. That's the story in the pits. Back to you both. Thanks, Dan. Let's get in depth with Nemo's nemesis. My friends and family call me a power-hungry, remote-controlling, gadget-tweaking junkie. So when it came time to build a robot, Andy Chen, along with teammates Michael Peterson and Paul Chavez, wanted to create something that was offbeat. The result? Nemo's Nemesis. Rolling along at 18 miles per hour, Nemo's Nemesis runs off two 180-watt scooter motors. 
Each motor is powered by two lead-acid 12-volt batteries. This bot's weapon, a pair of flippers which are driven by a high-pressure pneumatic air tank that operates at 100 psi. Sleek, maneuverable, and menacing. And he hopes Nemo's nemesis will swap the decks with the competition. Hi, Captain. Now let's turn our attention to his opponent, Pangolin. Mike Atkins uses industrial robots at his day job. So, when it was time for him and his son Brett to build their robot, he put them to work making pangolins interlocking parts. We were using a high-definition plasma cutter on the end of a robot arm that actually did all the cutting for us. All the internal panels are all interlocked and welded together. Then Mike and Brett assembled the precision components, which include a T6 aluminum wedge. I decided to use the wedge for my design because it's been proven over and over as a good design. And don't forget to beware of this wedge's nasty kick. On the flipper, I'm using the 140 PSI going into the cylinder. It's a three-inch four cylinder. And I should have no problems at all with a 200-pound uh, robot. Mike and his son are confident that Pangolin's got what it takes to go all the way. We're about to see if they're right. Okay, it's time once again for the labyrinth. Six panes of glass, six challenges, two rats, two competitors, and 150 points hanging the belts. Let's go down to Dan Danknick ringside. Thanks, Tanya. Even a highly skilled driver can be subverted by an unstable design. Nemo's nemesis is just flat out hard to drive. Under all that armor, it's a three-wheel design, two powered wheels, and a trailing caster. It's easy to turn, but tough to drive straight. So if Nemo gets stuck in the sand, he'll be sunk. Under the hood, Pangolin has powerful motors and 10-inch drive wheels. He's engineered for victory. Back to you. Thanks, Dan. Rolling in on the right is Andy Chen's Nemo's nemesis, and to the left is Mike Adkins' Pangolin. Pangolin's glass breaker is actually on a mechanical arm that can raise or lower as needed. Sounds like the labyrinth's stomach is rubbling. Soup's on! Bon Appetit, robots. Robots ready. Turntable movie, and these two are going right after each other. We got ourselves a fight, yes! Nemo's nemesis using those wedges to try to lift Pangolin, but Pangolin slips free. Now he's under Nemo, but Nemo pulls back. Pangolin's out of the turntable. He's going for points, turning towards the spikes. Nemo's nemesis is going through the saloon doors. The rats are out now. No problem as Nemo's nemesis turns toward the box. The Red Rat is trying to cause problems as Nemo's nemesis pounds into the 253-pound obstacle here. Oh, Red Rat gets lifted up there as Penguin still sits at the rear speed bumps. He's stuck, Amit. Gets a nudge from the Grey Rat there, but his ground clearance will cause him problems in this event. Oh, stabbed by the spikes! Penguin has to wait to regain his wheels. Now it scoots across. Gonna see if he can get that glass breaker to work. Not quite strong up there. He's gonna turn it around and back into it. Oh, and he knocks the glass free. He doesn't break, but it still gets Mike 15 points. Nemo's nemesis has almost cleared the box. He slips through backwards and evens it at 15, Dan. Nemo actually cut off the outside of his wedges for a narrower profile, which helped him get through that gap. Panklin going for the suspension bridge. He's down. Oh, and he's stuck there. He didn't take the cue from his earlier clearance problem, Amit. The longer your robot is, the more ground clearance you need to get over this dip. He's resting on the front and back end of his robot. His wheel's not even touching the bridge. A big opportunity for Nemo's nemesis here. He was down 30 after the gauntlet. It's tied so far in the labyrinth. Time to make him some points. The rats don't cause him too much grief, then. Oh, he's flipping those wedges, almost like a warning. Gray rat backs up. And now Red Rat starts pecking at Pangolin. This could be a blessing in disguise, Amit. One good hit, and Mike's robot might get pushed free. Mike's still working those controls. Red Rat hits him again. It looks like he's moving, and he's up! Red Rat, kind of a dual personality going on. The evil critter actually helps out. Of course, Pangolin will have to get back across the bridge, and I'm not sure he's capable of it. He'll need a lot of speed. If he can take out the glass and soar across at the same time, Mike will have saved himself. He's got that glass breaker up. Breaks the glass. Oh, but he gets turned sideways, and those tires are spinning once again. Nemo's nemesis, meanwhile, heads over to the ramp. Is he going over backwards, or is he hitting for the sand? Got those wedges up. He is going for the ramp. He times it, and he's across. 20 points. That ties him again with Pangolin here in the labyrinth. Two obstacles to go, and Pangolin is still stuck on that bridge. 
Here goes Nemeth Nemesis, back across the ramp. He's moving. Oh, almost tossed headlong there. Those wedges saved him, Ahmet. If they're down, he lands on his face, and it's all over. Mike can't stand this. He can see Nemo's Nemesis still running, but he's going nowhere. He does still have an overall lead of 30 points, but Nemo's Nemesis has time to catch up. He's avoiding that sand, though, Ahmet. He knows how tricky it would be driving through there, but the only thing left is the rollers, which are also tricky for a two-wheeled robot to handle. Anglin, meanwhile, being nudged by the Red Rat again, but I don't think he'll get the same results this time. No, the Rat can't pull, and in fact, it looks stuck itself. Mike and his son have to root for that clock right now. Tough break for Penguin, but time is running down. There's the siren. Nemo's nemesis is heading for the gates. We could have an interesting situation here, Dan. That bonus paint is 30 points. If Nemo gets it, we have an overall tie. Both would get to advance to the fight to the finish. Andy Chen is fighting for it here. He wants a shot at that fight, and the glass is so close. Ahmet, you can hear that motor straining right now. The wheels just aren't getting the power they need to get the gate down. He's going backward, trying to concentrate his pushing power into the single point of that tail, but I'm not sure he has enough juice left. He's turning around now. Nope, and he's turning back. He's got the right angle. Looks like his bot will just fit through those gates if he can nail him here. But now it doesn't even look like he's moving. Has he lost power? Gray Rat's giving him the what for. You can see Andy working it there. Now he's moving, but time's about to expire. He's at the edge of the turntable. And there's the buzzer. So near yet so far. Nemo's nemesis almost pulled off a great comeback. Andy is obviously disappointed. A great round, but Mike Adkins hangs on for the victory. Ahmed, I thought Penguin's stable six-wheel design would secure him the victory, but that long body nearly proved to be his undoing. Nemo's nemesis tried to take advantage and rack up the points. He even survived a nearly fatal mistake at the flip ramp, but in the end, he just didn't have the power to complete this come-from-behind victory. It's a tie. Both bots walk away with 35 points, but Pangolin had more points going into the event, so he's moving on to the fight to the finish. Tanya is standing by with the winner as we speak. Here we have Mike Adkins and his son, Brett, representing Pangolin. Great job. Now, I know during the entire competition, you guys had the rats right at your tail. Probably helped me more than anything else. You think? Yeah. And as, I, as soon as I hit that bridge, I was done. And you had, some, the, you had trouble with your glass breaker, didn't you? When it first started out, I don't know if there was something wrong with the frequency, but my weapons were inadvertently firing repeatedly. Okay. And I wasn't touching them. So it ended up de depleting my air supply real quick. Because it wasn't always consistent when it was coming up and flipping no, up. No, it was supposed to go up and stay up. All right, let's talk about when you were stuck on the bridge. Tell me about that. What happened? I thought my wheels were far enough forward to uh, handle the bridge pretty safely. Mm -hmm. so that's why I went ahead straight across that one. But as soon as I hit, I knew otherwise. I knew I was dead because I was hung up in the front and rear. And I know that going into the labyrinth, this is your first time into the labyrinth. Yes, it is. What was your biggest challenge here? My biggest challenge, I thought, would maybe would be the sand. Ah, oh, the sand. Yeah, I didn't even look at the other one being a problem. I was looking at the sand. I thought the bridge would be easy. I was <laughs> fooled. You were fooled. The labyrinth does that to you, you know. Yes, it All does. right. Well, great job. And, Brett, great job to you, too. Thank you. You're welcome. On to the fight to the finish. Here we go. So the fight to the finish will be Jawbreaker's Revenge versus Pangolin. One of them is going home with the medal, and the other is going home as scrap metal. Robotica we'll gets intense in a moment. With our final contest, the robot destroying fight to the finish. When we come back. <laughs> Robotica is back with a vengeance. We saw it all happen. Jawbreaker had a solid lead going into the labyrinth, but just winning wasn't good enough. He decided to humiliate the bomb by taking the labyrinth with Buzz Bomb in his jaws. Pangolin took the gauntlet with enough points to carry him through the labyrinth and into the fight to the finish. Both robots that are headed to the fight to the finish brought problems on themselves because of the obstacles they chose in the labyrinth. Have traction problems in fight to the finish if they're just glazed over with sand and paint. Yeah, definitely. The floundering that Jawbreaker's Revenge did in the sand may have caused Tim and his team troubles they aren't even aware of yet. Well, if anything, I think we got to worry about the sand that we threw inside of here when we were uh, spinning the tire so much. Yeah, we're a little bit open in the jaw area, so I think our best yeah. bet is to uh, get a vacuum cleaner and maybe take off some of these panels and yeah, I'm get sure the sand off. Pangolin, meanwhile, did major damage to his weapon when he jammed himself on the suspension bridge. I got to check the front wedge; it's not operating. 
smooth anymore. I don't know what happened to it there. It took a pretty hard hit somewhere. When pit time started, Mike's wedge did not have its full range of motion, and he soon began to doubt he'd have time to restore it. It was like the cylinder got bent. I'll take it out and see if I can bend it back. This pit period will come down to time spent under the hood, because a malfunctioning weapon on either side will put that bot at a big disadvantage. Our competition began with four rugged robots, and a pair of nasty events later, we're left with two. But we can only send one to the Robotica Championship, and they'll have to battle it out to decide who's moving on and who's moving out. And we're going to do it with the fight to the finish, and here's how it works. Two bots enter this platform high above the arena floor. They'll battle it out for one minute before the safety gates disappear. Then one goes flying, and the other gets a medal. The time has finally arrived. The competitors have taken their places in the skybox, overlooking the field of battle. There's Mike Adkins and his son, Brett, pacing nervously. And here comes Pangolin. They worked hard to get that wedge ready for this competition. We'll see how effective it proves to be. And there's Robotica veterans Tim Berghofer and Walter Martinez. Here comes their robot, Jawbreaker's Revenge. We've seen how nasty that weapon can be. It will have to continue its mean streak to win here tonight. These are two very different robots who got here in very different ways. Now their slates are clean as they prepare for the greatest fight in competitive robotics. Let's see what happens. Robots ready. The fight is on! Pangolin gets out first. Jawbreaker's revenge sidesteps the blow, and now they're locked up. They spin. Pangolin bounces off the gates. Jawbreaker raising up there. He tries pushing. Slams Pangolin into the corner. He backs off. Couldn't get the jaw underneath Pangolin. And now he does. Pangolin back in the corner, in the grass of Jawbreaker's revenge. He clamps down. I think he's trying to push him over the wall. Now they come off the gate. Jawbreaker up Kilter there. He's got one wheel in the air. Now he gets two down. Oh, but he can't hang on, and now he flips over. Jawbreaker's revenge, he backs away now. Quickly back right side up. Hanglin couldn't take advantage of Jawbreaker's disorientation, and Jawbreaker's got him again. Hard against the rail. Here goes that jaw. Hanglin spinning his tires there, and now Jawbreaker's revenge has got him right where he wants him. He's got both wheels on the ground. He's got Hanglin off balance. Now he's just waiting for the gates to fall. He circles around, drags him backwards now. Oh, hard in the rail, and he's loose again, but the gates go down, and Pangolin over the edge! Oh, but he hasn't fallen, it looks like one of the spikes is actually holding him up, we've never seen this before! Jawbreaker's revenge is trying to push him over, now he's clamping down again, he'll have to reposition him, he's trying to pull him off that spike, but one of his own tires is spinning, not finding traction. Oh, there he goes, Pangolin shifts a bit, it's just another Pangolin ball! Jawbreaker's revenge is solid performance here in the fight to the finish. A triumphant spin of the robot for Tim and Walter. They've earned themselves a spot in the robotic final. Good match, guys. Good match. Amit, that wedge design of Pangolin came back to haunt him, leaving an opening for Jawbreaker's revenge to get underneath and grasp it. He had a chance when Jawbreaker let go of him, but he drove himself off the edge. And once he was sitting there suspended on the spike, it was little work for Jawbreaker's revenge to finish the job. After an epic struggle, Jawbreaker's Revenge sends Pangolin to Valhalla and himself to the finals. We'll get his final words when we come back, so stay with us. Robotica, it's a contact sport for robots, that is. Robotica is back. We have Tim Berghofer and Jawbreaker's Revenge. Great round. So I gotta know, what was your strategy going into this? Was it to clamp on to Pangolin and just like, yeah, carry him around? Yeah, we, we wanted to get to the side of him right away because uh, we knew his wedge in the front could theoretically push us right over before the gates go down. So our main control was to get to the side of him and try to take a few bites at him within a minute. Uh, once the gates went down, we wanted to be steady and slow, mm -hmm. and uh, we didn't want to drive ourselves off. He was heavier than you. Pangolin's a very heavy bot. Were yeah. you afraid of that? Well, we're about the same weight. Uh, but he has six wheels, which gives him right. a lot of traction. So we were concerned about getting in a front end against front end thing because he could uh, probably win that battle. So okay, we now, wanted to get to the side. And at the very end there, why you went up to him, you clamped onto him. Were you afraid you were both going to go over at one point, or was well, that? Well, we, we kind of considered doing it for a second because that's how we won last year, going bo over with the other robot. But uh, 
decided we'd probably be better off staying up here this year. That's right. And you, you were, you've flipped over a few times. Then, yeah, too. yeah. See, it's a small platform, and if I accelerate too quick, I'll actually just pop a wheelie and flip over. So I gotta steady myself and repop a wheelie and get back the regular way for my jaw to be effective. That's right. It also works to your advantage in many cases. Yes, it does. Great job, and you are going on to the Robotica Championship. Woo! All right. <laughs> When next we meet, I'll have four more robots willing to risk their lives for your amusement. Life doesn't get any better than this, if you ask me. Will they live or die? Join us and find out. Tanya Memmi, Dan Thantic, and myself, Ahmed Zappa. Goodbye, and may your motors be strong, your radio control frequencies unobstructed, and your batteries last forever. Robotica.